how on earth could you have a public key crypto system? So usually I do this uh, in a class demo, a um, bunch of people in the room. How is it that I can have somebody tell me a secret even though everybody else in the class is over, overhearing it and I'm the only one who can figure out the message? Seems impossible. Uh, so, well, let me go ahead and give an example here. Let's uh, work it through. Um, here's what I'm going to have you do. I'm going to go and ask, here's, we're going to use a particular system here. Um, the message, by the way, we're, we're going to treat as a number. We're going to treat all our messages as numbers. So you can take, if you have a text message, turn it into a big number uh, any way you like. Um, okay, so here's what, uh, how we're going to uh, encode something. The encoding function E is going to be, hey, take your message, multiply it by 667, okay? Then throw away all the digits except the last three, okay? Uh, by the way, my message, is, the secret message needs, is going to be a number between 0 and 1,000, uh, up to 1,000. Um, okay, so gosh, what are we going to, uh, to do? We're gonna, I'm going to go ahead and imagine somebody in class, I would ask, hey, somebody write down, take get a volunteer, write down a, a three-digit number, fold it up, uh, and then pull out a calculator. Take message times 667. And give me just the last three digits. Okay, so let's go ahead and model this. I'm going to use a random uh, number from a computer program instead. So let me go ahead and to show you that it's, um, let me generate a, a random number. And I want to be able to repeat it later to recover. I want to uncover this piece of paper. So first, let me just take the current time in milliseconds and grab the last. Um, not quite a number a little bit less than a billion. Uh, and I'm going to set my random number generator to use that as a seed. Okay. So I'm going to do something I call random of a thousand. Um, and uh, every time I call random, I get back another random number. So it might be 336, might be 667, by weird coincidence, 553. Okay. Uh, I set this sequence is coming from uh, something that I just took the milliseconds as of the moment I typed that. So here's what's going to happen. I'm going to go and uh, ask somebody to take, uh, I'm going to call this a fourth time. The fourth time I call random is going to be the secret message. And here's what I'm going to ask them to do. I'm going to say, go ahead and take, uh, let's take random of 1000 and then multiply that by 667 and then go ahead and take the remainder. So this dot remainder. Uh, why are these weird dots? Why am I writing it like that? Uh, that's just this language racket that I'm using here. Um, and there's a different, it's not the usual way of writing this in racket, but I'll make it look. Okay, so I asked somebody for uh, their hidden message, which I don't know what that is. It was, didn't show up on the screen. Uh, they multiplied it by 667, threw away the last three digits, and they say, hey, yeah, uh, volunteer from the audience, uh, they say, uh, my number's 286. And I'm like, gosh, 286. I wonder what their original message was. And let me see if I can do it here. It's going to end, let's see, uh, 858858 uh, was their original message. Okay, that's my claim. 858. Um, and I'll show that by putting in 858 again, that's, that will get back 286. So it must have been 858 that they had. There we are. 288. So 858 was the message that they had originally chosen. Okay. How on earth could we know that? Now you heard everything I did. You saw everything I did. Could you have told me that the secret number was 286? Well, this is the public key. Multiply it by 667 and throw away the last three digits. Um, the, I know the private key that went with that. I made, I gave you that 667, right? That was my public key. I know the private key. Okay. Um, and what I did is I took the, this 286 and multiplied it by my private key and that undid it. And that gave me, um, back the 858. So, okay. Um, it turns out my private key turned out to be three. I multiplied by three, throwing away the last digits. 
286 by 3 gives me 1858 or so, or 850, just 858. Yeah. Okay. Um, now, what's goofing you up? If I just said, by the way, if I just said, hey, uh, volunteer in the audience, send me your, your secret hidden message multiplied by 667, and you overheard that, that would be easy to undo. Uh, you just say, hey, I just need to undo the multiplying by 667. I'll divide by 667. And everybody in the room would have been able to figure out the answer. But that remainder 1,000, that kind of threw things off. Okay, how do you divide by uh, 667 uh, when you only know the last three digits? That's what makes it kind of difficult. So, um, okay. This is not a secure public key system. This is simply an emotional motivation that it is possible. Um, you can stop now if you want. I'm just to reveal why three works there. Um, and I'll point out that in general, any system like this that is multiplying and then take the remainder uh, after some other number, uh, mathematicians do know how to break that. Mathematicians do know how to divide by any number in the presence of taking the remainder. Just take the remainder. Um, and that's a well understood problem. It's actually, uh, if you take a discrete math course, you might work through that. It's uh, Euclid's algorithm for the greatest common divisor with some extra information. It's often called the extended Euclid's algorithm. Will let you solve a problem just like this. So, okay, but um, why did three happen to work? The way, the reason three happened to work is because three times 667 gives me 2001. If I throw away the last digits, it's kind of like they just gave me one, right? Uh, and so here's what happened. They took a random message um, and multiplied it by one number. I multiplied it by another number, but we ended up together multiplying it by 2001. And so it's like multiplying it by 2000 and then adding one more copy of it. And since we're throwing away multiples of a thousand, we're taking the remainder after dividing by a thousand. Yeah, I'm getting back just that one copy. So that's why it exactly undoes what it does. Oh, by the way, you might want to go ahead and check that. Uh, let me set that random seed again there. Uh, and just call random 1000. Uh, I'm going to get 336, 66, and then the what the uh, person had used for their random number. And again, I claim that this next random number is going to be 858. Yeah. Okay, so that was the number that the sender had used. Okay. Uh, I'm going to simply uh, finish by adding one more thing that's important to know about uh, public key systems is that they can also be used to sign documents, digitally sign a document. And by digitally sign, here's what I want you to really understand. When I say digitally signed, we talk about this in a security sense. I'm not talking about, hey, I went ahead and signed it on paper, took a picture, or scanned it, and then sent you the image of my signature. That's not what we mean by a digital signature, although nowadays is what people seem to think that it means. Because people now do that a lot. Um, okay. Uh, digitally signing a document says, hey, I'm going to go ahead and send you a document. And here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to encrypt it with my private key, okay? Uh, so it's going to come out a bunch of gobbledygook, and I'm going to send you that gobbledygook. And it might be overheard. Uh, I, here I don't really care about overhearing, though. What I care is you get this thing, and uh, you decrypt it, and you're going to decrypt it with my public key. And when you decrypt it, you get a nice message back, a bunch of English words that actually make sense and are not gobbledygook, Okay. And you're like, well, how do I know this was really sent to me by the person who says they sent it to me? Say it's a, a document saying, uh, yeah, I hereby uh, give you $1,000 uh, from my bank account. Um, how do I know they really have authorized that? Or yes, I agree to buy this house. Um, how do you know that it wasn't somebody else who forged this document? Well, the fact that it could be decrypted with my public key means it was encrypted with my private key. And it turns out a property of public key systems that is nice, that you don't need this for a public key system, but most of them do this. Uh, yeah, whatever the public, whatever one key encrypts, the other key decrypts out of the public and private. So the fact that, hey, it was decrypted with a Barlin's public key, it must have been encrypted with his private key, okay? Or somebody at least who knows private key. 
if you assume that the only people who person who knows my private key is me, then you can be pretty dang sure it came from me. And that's what visually signing a system is. So yeah, public key systems, kind of weird that they can even work at all. Hopefully this little toy example that's not actually a secure system, but hopefully it at least motivates how somebody can give me a piece of information with a bunch of eavesdroppers all around, and it still is considered a secure piece of information, or at least not obvious how to get the original message back.